Well, my name is Wani. This is Hannah. My wife Hannah. Uh, we've been married for two years, very much newlyweds. Uh, but how we met, you want to share a little bit how we met? Okay, go ahead. So we met um, at a college. He was working at a church in the college ministry, and I had just gotten hired as the administrative assistant. So we met first day on the job. He, I thought he was ridiculous and kind of dumb. Like, I, not like mentally, but I just didn't like him. <laughs> I didn't like him, and so I, yeah. But then things change. And that's how we met. <laughs> I was a really, really, really nice guy. And I was funny. And so, those words didn't come out of her mouth. And it worked out okay. So, yeah. Oh. Hello, everyone. My name is Kathy Kim. And this is... This is Peter. So, more or less, it was a blind date. We were set up by a close friend. It was one of my closest childhood friends, but it was her pastor at the time. He called and said, would you like to meet one of our best girls in our whole church? I said, absolutely. And uh, so we went on a blind date. It didn't go too well, and I guess we could, but it ended up well. <laughs> the date didn't go that well, and then I guess later I could share a little more about that. Yes, that is true that he, uh, the person who introduced us, he, he was my former pastor, but Peter's friend, and um, he said, I have a friend, I have a friend who is very single. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. That's true. He's a person desperate. I was, I was. So it was a blind date, and the uh, rest is in his face. And I was, uh, I'm running on you, and I was a little confused when she said she was starting with the newlyweds. Uh, I thought she meant us. <laughs> uh, we've been married 16, uh, 16 years, uh, and this is my lovely wife, but I bet you, and she'll share how we met. Um, I was a software trainer, and he was um, an IT guy, and he was in my class. And after we did the first module of our class, he decided to read the newspaper in the middle of my class. <laughs> well, um, I continued to train the rest of his team. And two years later, I just started my own business in the company I used to work for doing training. And then I get a call from his company, his company. Guess who needed my class again? <laughs> so I made some money off of him. And so we worked, about, we worked together about 30 days. I was I did not like him because he was the jerk who was in my class reading the paper. But the long story short of it, we worked together about 30 days. I went to a women's conference and God, in six weeks we were married in three dates. Praise the Lord. Uh, going on 12 years, yes. we have you. three kids. Yes. We have four uh, kids, range from 14 to 20 to 29, and we're blended families. And three grandchildren. We have zero kids. Marriage is great. <laughs> Thank you for that, that beginning. Jane is going to walk around and collect um, if you have anything written down. This will be our first first round, so feel free to dump something in there. Um, why don't we start out with um, something that Fred talked about, you know, with all his wisdom. Is maybe what is one of the biggest changes that went from being single um, to, uh, to dating? And oh, thank you. single to married. Was there a, you know, dating to marriage, single to marriage? What might be one of the biggest changes for you that happened? So for anybody to shout it out. <laughs> you don't remember that. You don't remember that. <laughs> don't, don't default to us for newer stuff. We'll default to you for harder questions. That's how it's going to work in your relationship. Um, yeah. Do you want to end? Do you want to? OK. For, I guess from single to dating, I think it's, I don't know if I have a solid answer for that. I think. I think when we talked about it, uh, your time, your margin goes a little bit down. If it's serious, you know, if, it's, if you're allocating time to be with each other, your options become a little more limited, which is fine. Um, more so from, I guess, dating to marriage. I mean, the toilet seat's down all the time, so that's helpful in our house, so we have those rules. Um, but 
I don't know, do you have anything to add? Do you want to talk about that? Go ahead. I don't want to this. Yeah, I think one thing that I was not expecting that changed a lot is I think when you like surrender your life to the Lord and then you get married, you just kind of realize, as you probably already do now, like you're not in charge of your life. And so for me, getting married meant moving like a thousand miles away from my family where I'd lived my whole life. And now it means living here, still far away from like everything we know. And so it's like, oh, you think like this is, you know, marriage and then everything will come together. And it's like, no, sometimes like we got married, which is awesome. But now we're like, life is completely different. So like, there's just different things you don't necessarily think about. So for us, that was something that was like totally different. But like, you know, God's always working on that too. So. Yeah, so after our, after our honeymoon, I took her up to South Dakota. So that's a context there. It was like the coldest winter they had in 80 years. So it was like negative 40, negative 30. That was like the temperature, you know, without wind chill. I mean, it was, it was that cold. So our entire, even up to now, our marriage has been away from home. We're both from Georgia. Uh, so it's been, it's been a great thing. It's something that we both didn't plan necessarily because from our first date to marriage, it was pretty quick and it was all on distance for the most part. We were engaged, um, so it's been a great experience. We weren't expecting to be away from home, where both of our families are at, a great community for our, our marriage up to now. So, it's a big change. And uh, I don't mind sharing. Um, Yvette and I got married when um, we were 37, and so I had had 37 years of not sharing a bathroom. With <laughs> And I just remembered uh, being married, being in the bathroom, one bathroom, and um, having my new bride come into the bathroom, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> so it took a little while for a transition in terms of sharing bathrooms. And I guess the second thing that I would add uh, on a more serious note, uh, would be uh, definitely relationships uh, outside of the marriage in terms of how you interact with uh, friends that you did have before uh, both female and male. It's definitely different uh, as a married uh, individual. Um, one of the we, reason we got married so fast, um, we didn't want to burn in hell. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, um, I mean, I've been married before. That was my second marriage. It's his first marriage, and we began dating. And so when you start getting to this physical thing and you're serving God, you really get the conviction of, I need to do this God's way. I, want to, I was blessed. And so the reason I married him is because we made some choices that weren't, you know, in God's favor, um, doing it God's way. And I cried. I cried and I cried. And he says, who am I? To come into your life, you've been blessed with your own business, your own home. God was blessing you before you met me. Who am I to put myself before God? I will walk away before I ever see you cry like that. And so that's when I knew it was my husband. So yeah, so definitely God being in the mix of it is huge. Do not sacrifice, you know, that opportunity to have a blessed marriage because God can't bless a mess. So you really want to do it God's way. I think without a doubt, Jumping from singleness to dating is a big thing. It's great, but no matter how long you've been dating, there's no comparison to that in marriage. And dating, you're just having fun, going out to dinner, uh, you have someone to ride in the car with, but then when you get married, the, you're blending the families, the, both families' origin together. And that you don't have to deal with when you're dating necessarily. And that is a very complicated thing that I think separates in a huge way dating versus marriage. You have to really deal with both sides of the family because now the families have joined together through the marriage. And that can be very challenging um, and stretching in ways that you'll never experience if you're just a dating couple. And the Bible says leave and cleave, and you know what it's like to do that. <laughs> and the one thing that personally the biggest change was, now looking back as a single, I was very self-focused. It was all about me. And I could do that because it was just me that I had to take care of. And a lot of the focus, I think that was a big concern of Peter too, especially when we're going into ministry. 
and I just wanted to try many different things and I was just really curious and you know, aspired to do many things and but the moment I my kids were born and things were completely changing where I was more family focused and willing to sacrifice and um, so I feel like God has grown me through that process that I my children made me a better person <laughs> because uh, I had to sort of like you know dying to yourself for the sacrifice for the for the family sort of thing so I, I think for that you have to grow up fast and really uh, put others before your needs so that was a big adjustment I think. a couple of you guys talked about um, not liking your spouse at first. So maybe if we can revisit that time in your life in the beginning. Um, because <laughs> um, just in that decision making process, <laughs> maybe all of you, um, that decision making process of how did you know this was the one or um, how important is physical attraction, you know, or what was important to you Maybe, it, Kathy, you were talking in your singleness when it was all about you, but then when you met this particular person, what shifted in that, in your thinking for you, that this was the one for you? Okay, you call out my name. So I, I guess when I met Peter, um, there was no chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, don't dis just because there's no chemistry. I'm very, I'm a sort of very passionate, emotional person, so for me it was important, but then um, as I got to know him, it came, it definitely came. I'm so attracted to him, even now. And really? even, <laughs> the way you look at me, and my heart really flutters too, really, even to now. So, the attraction definitely came later. Um, so, so, what, what, I don't know, I just got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you decide you, oh, Peter okay. was the one? Yes, yeah, so what he's yes. the one. Um, yes. As I got to know him, and I really was impressed with his heart, his heart for the Lord. And I've always prayed for um, someone who not only loves God, but who uh, has a strong leadership where he can lead me, because <laughs> I was not very tamed at the time. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm very tamed, I think. By the grace of God. Tamed as I am. I think God, God continues to work in me. I, I definitely can say that. but. Um, even if he doesn't change a thing from what I know, the core of his heart and what I have seen, I could, I could see myself spending the rest of my life and be happy. And I wasn't looking for a needle in the haystack. I don't think God had this one person, you are desperately looking for that one person. I don't believe that. I think there are many people that God gives you opportunity and you have a freedom to choose. And at the end, looking back, I know that he was the one God has prepared for me. Along the way, there has been many convictions that God has brought that he indeed is the one that has placed in my heart, in, in my life, vice versa, that we are made for each other. But at the time, I only knew what I knew, and I could make a decision based on that. And that's all I needed. Just like, you know, you believe in God, you don't have to know all of it. You have to just know the gospel, what Christ has done. And then you continue to walk to get to know him. And then when we get to heaven, we'll know him fully. I think, uh, I think that's the same mentality where you don't have to know everything about him. You only know just the core at the basic foundation. And then the rest, you just have to trust God, right? Um. It was a spiritual assignment. Um, I like to tell you we ran through the flowered fields and it was this love, oh my God, I'm just melting. It wasn't like that. And it wasn't because we were older. I mean, maybe that was it. You know, we weren't as young and naive, but I knew in my, so a couple of things had to happen to confirm he was mine. I told you the first part. 
uh, my mother, who is that ultimate overbearing mom sometimes, when I call her and I tell her I'm marrying this guy after three dates in six weeks, and she's like, and I know this was a test, she says, you should do it. And I'm looking <laughs> at the phone, who are you, what alien abducted my mother, because no way you would ever say yes to this. She says, no, I really believe the Holy Spirit is saying, that's your husband. I'm like, oh my God. And so it was so clear to me, everything just began to click from the way our wedding got paid for, everything was just lining up from a free wedding gown, a $900 wedding gown donated to us, everything began to click about us. But it was a spiritual assignment. Um, the wedding wasn't about us. We brought people to Christ at our wedding. We did all, and our whole life is about God. And so it was different. And I can't describe that to you any more. You really need to hear from God. Um, that God, with the God in the middle, I mean, you don't look at, you have to always have a vertical relationship with God. You can't survive marriage without it. You have to be intimately connected and whole already. No Jerry Maguire moments, you complete this stuff. Yeah. No. But he used that line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you really. Confession. <laughs> the coolest part about what happened with us, even though we had six weeks, we had three month honeymoons because God began to just orchestrate things so we got to know each other. And so I'm just saying, put God first. Hear from the Lord and women. A man finds a good thing. Not you find them on, you know, date clicking to find a husband. That's God will bring a man to you. Because my church had no men available. But God coordinated a way for me to meet my Boaz. So I'm just saying, be patient and listen to God. And if I could uh, echo, um, at 37, um, I am probably the last man who would meet a woman, have three dates, and get married in six weeks. I'm just not wired that way. In fact, I had gone 37 years without being married, even though I felt like God was calling me to be a husband. And so when some of my friends asked me, and that's what Yvette was saying about it being a spiritual assignment, they said, well, you know, what's going on? How, you know, how could you be making this decision? Of all, of all people, how could you be making this decision? And I said, well, if I'm making this decision, how sure must I be? Because I would be the last person to make a decision like that. And so a lot of people always ask, how do you know it's the one? Uh, there's just something inside of you that if you're following along with God, he'll give you the confirmation that you need. Because we have 16 years where we're no, you know, we're not guessing about it because we've just seen God's life or God working our lives during that period of time. But at that time, when we were making the decision, when there were a lot of things flying, it was just an inside confirmation that this was from God. And it was on both sides. And then it did happen to also be around the people who were around us. Even though the circumstances suggested that this was a very quick and maybe not through thought through decision, there was just general support from our family members and other people who were touched to God. So that's kind of a second piece. Not saying that everybody's saying don't do it, that, you know, but that is a, a time to pause and maybe double check. Uh, but God has a way of speaking to you and those who are in your life. Ah, uh, man. This is wisdom right here. <laughs> I'm hearing this. I'm being ministered to. Please consult these people for marriage uh, uh, advice. But um, man, with with us, um, it was it was a moment we were doing ministry together, and what kind of made me re made me see Hannah. She was always a wonderful uh, a gal. She she served well. She she loved people, and it was a moment uh, in. in unexpected moment that I saw that Hannah showed a moment of character that she wasn't trying to impress me like we, didn't, we weren't even dating there was no interest but she um, she showed this moment that was unbeknownst to a lot of people but I saw it and when I saw her show her character something clicked in me like I, this is someone this is someone if she'll give me a shot I, I, I'll marry her you know and she wasn't trying to impress me she was just being Hannah uh, and, and, and her relationship with the Lord, like all these things, she was just being who she was in the Lord. 
and a moment happened where I saw her. And now I say that it can be very romantic in movies, like I saw her for the first, and then everything happened like that. It didn't really happen that way, because when I asked you out, she said, maybe. She, <laughs> said, <laughs> she sat me down, I said, hey, let's have a conversation. And she was 100% honest. She said, I don't know, but I'll go on a date with you. Uh, and I'm glad she did, you know, she had a great time. I was a funny, nice guy. Uh, so it worked out uh, in my favor, but man, it, and I was the kind of, Kathy, you mentioned like the untamed person, like <laughs> I was more of the date, like the person that dated more, uh, like was, you know, very extroverted in some ways. But it, honestly, it was that moment where something just clicked and I'm like, that's whatever that was, this moment that she, that she did, uh, and there's a story behind that, but yeah, that's when I felt that, that connection and she gave me an opportunity, um, which I think, thank her for. That was really huge. So, and I asked her to marry for like a month and she said, not yet. So, uh, yeah, it took a little while for her to say yes, but she did, finally, so. Hi. Oh, go ahead, no, go ahead. Um, um, so for myself, the first time I saw Kathy, I was invited by my friend who was a pastor that set us up to speak at their church on missions. <laughs> so it was a, kind of a talk I did we had finished that service, and I remember I was getting uh, in line for the refreshment time, the food, and Kathy always had this heart to serve. Mm -hmm. And so she was one of the ladies serving food to everyone, and she caught my eyes and, hmm, you know, I got single. <laughs> but you know, hey, you know, I'm pastor, I'm, you know, I, I, I just spoke God's word, so I can't. You know, hit on one of the church ladies. You know, so that was I'm like she caught my eye, and then well, what could I do? <laughs> I spoke. I'm a pastor. I am single, and uh, I just said, well, well, you know, I can't really do too much. So, uh, but I remember that, and then it hit me later on when about a year or so later, when my friend called, that that was the girl that caught my eye. Um, during that time that she was serving. So I, I clearly do remember that, and that was really cool how that works out. Um, so anyway, that's my little yeah. story. Yeah. And if I could throw in there yeah. just uh, just one small thing. I know Yvette and I mentioned that we uh, dated, had three dates and over a six week period. But prior to that, we did actually work together. Mm -hmm. So just so you understand the timeline, uh, about a year before she got hired for the project, um, when I sat in her class, there's about a year that went in between there, which we had no contact uh, at all. And then, uh, as she mentioned, after the rest of my team got fired and I still needed to roll out the software project and I had not paid attention in class, uh, then she came and we hired her on. And so we had about this three month period where we were just working together. And during that working period, it was not romantic, it was just work. Uh, so I think God oftentimes will allow you, and it seems like with both other couples, allow you an opportunity to interact that's not necessarily always in a romantic manner. It doesn't always have to start there. Mm -hmm. Staying on the individual in this in this beginning time. Um, Hannah, you mentioned that there were some things that um, were, everything was different. Um, maybe can you talk to you about, as individuals, that before and after, um, how have you grown? Um, how have you seen um, maybe even the dreams for your life morph a little bit? Um, just some of the changes that have happened individually for you. Um, what has shifted? Um, maybe some practical ways that you've become stronger as a person, uh, maybe some weaknesses that you realized you didn't know that you had about yourself, um, things like that. What has shifted for you? Sure. Um, so I think, at least for me, I, this is just kind of personally, and it maybe it applies to you, maybe it doesn't, but for me at least, I was just like kind of probably over-enchanted with this whole idea, of like, oh, we're going to get married, it's just going to be like the best thing that's ever happened to me, which it's been awesome. And I think, <laughs> just to clarify. Just to clarify, it's not the best thing that's happened to her. <laughs> it's almost there. Yeah, but, um, is he still fighting I, for you? He's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
yeah, so I, I think like for, for me, like one thing that we talked about a lot before we got married is that we read this book and it said that marriage is something that makes you, um, the end goal of it is to make you holy and not to make you happy. And I, maybe I, I think like in my heart, maybe I just thought like, okay, but marriage is definitely like, I'm going to be happy. Like this is going to be happy. And then we moved away and I just feel like the Lord has reminded me like, and it's been, I think for our whole relationship, it's been God reminding me like, I am the end goal. Like I am your end goal. I am like, if you had me and nothing else, you have enough. And I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 I get that. I get that. And then like, I just have to be keeping reminded of that. And I think probably one of the biggest lessons I've learned um, individually through this is that I put too much pressure on thinking that this was going to make me happy or that there was going to be some kind of like, I don't know, I just had these weird, um, I guess, expectations of some kind of huge satisfaction that was going to happen. And what God's been teaching me is like to come to Him for that and that, at least for me, I, I thought maybe... Wandy was going to provide something for me that I was going to need that was going to make me feel a certain way. And God's been like, okay, do you see now that that wasn't true? Like, <laughs> do you see now that, like, you still come to me for these things? Like, and that, yeah. that even more so, like, we fail each other probably more than I was expecting. And that in that, like, hey, okay, God, this is you reminding me. Like, this is, we need you in this. Like, and, and it's probably cliche, but they always when I think of like our marriage sermons we've heard it's like been a, a triangle with the husband the wife and God and like the closer you move to God the closer you move to each other and that you really cannot get closer to each other without getting closer to God and that's been the biggest lesson anybody else care to dip into that one some practical um, things maybe individually that you felt you struggled with or ruin discovered about yourself Throw every image of a romantic comedy out of your head. <laughs> Amen. Uh, it'll mess you up. It'll mess up your marriage bed. It'll mess you up. It does not work like a romantic comedy. It doesn't. It doesn't. And so the more you realize that, the other thing is probably, uh, this is my second marriage, and so my first one was kind of toxic. And so to have a man who spoke life into me, um, I am voluptuous. And he loved all that I was. But more importantly, I had to love all who I was. Um, I had been in an emotionally damaging relationship, so my self-esteem wasn't where it needed to be, and I was being processed. But the more I got more confident about who I was, I felt more whole, I felt more sexy, I felt more, and that draws your husband. But if you are broken, if you're insecure, it will come out and it will destroy your marriage. You really have to get yourself anchored in God. I had to realize that he is not the source of my happiness, just like Hannah was saying. God is. He is the source of my finances. He is the source of everything. He is not. And when I took that pressure off him, that God would take care of me, we could actually, now he could grow to where he needed to grow instead of all these preconceived conceptions I had in my head about who he was supposed to be, how he's supposed to be a provider. He's supposed to be able to do this according to a world standard. I had to be open to what God was going to do it. And that freed us up. It took the pressure off. And so that is probably the best advice I could give you. Get hold in him and then definitely listen to how God, your marriage will not look like anybody else's and stop patterning yourself after other people because God may do something totally different. Yeah. If I could say, uh, Yvette and I are very different. We like to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Please we tell have, us. But Please tell us. We, we have what I would consider a complementary skill set. And I think that's very a blessing from God. Uh, we say this all the time that she's the gas, I'm the brake. Uh, which is good because you can't have two gas pedals and you can't have two brakes. So you need both in order for the car to work. And we would say uh, if the process was to get some stars, Yvette's role or her, her way of doing it would be shoot for the moon and we'll get some stars along the way. Uh, my approach is, well, just figure out which stars you want to get and go for them. 
Uh, but either way it goes, you end up with stars. And either way you go, without the two of us together, you miss some of the stars. So you need both approaches in order to be able to do that. And so I know that I have grown um, tremendously just in terms of once you're married, you realize how selfish you really are. You know, to go through your whole life and it be about you, marriage really, and I thought that I was a very giving person, it, but it challenges you in that, uh, in that area. And you're giving, you know, on the front end, but year three, year four, year five, there's a lot of, a lot of challenges. And so I know Yvette has helped grow me. I put her like this, she's the, she's the hot sauce on my catfish. And the reason I say that, the, the reason I say please, that please, is please, please explain. Before, before I got married, I didn't know I wanted hot sauce. In fact, I never had hot sauce before I got married. But now that I'm married, now that I'm married, I actually look for the hot sauce on my catfish. Uh, so oh. she, that explains that, that, that over and over again, she has expanded me in a way that I wouldn't have expanded without her. So that's, that's the best 